So that's the Making an impact this week, the mayor of Miami Beach is proposing major changes for the Ocean Drive Business District. A closer look at the controversy after mayhem over the Memorial Day weekend. Now on impact mess on Memorial Day weekend in Miami Beach, several high profile incidents with police are triggering action from city leaders, but not all business owners are pleased. Joining me now to discuss that and other major issues, Mayor Philip Levine, the mayor of Miami Beach. Mayor, thanks again for joining us here on impact. Thank you, Jackie. Before we get started with business, let's talk about con how congratulations are in order, a new baby yes. and marriage on the way. What's going uh, on? I'm so excited. I can't yeah. wait. I'm actually marrying my sweetheart for many, many years. I'm having a baby in the first week of October. October, boy. Wow. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, so let's talk about Urban Beach Weekend. Two shootings that weekend. Mm -hmm. Police say crime is down in Miami Beach, but those were two high-profile shootings. Are you in favor of keeping Urban Beach Weekend on the beach? Absolutely. The key is Miami Beach is open to everyone who wants to come and enjoy and safely and, and really respect our city. And it doesn't make a difference where you come, what your ethnicity is. Miami Beach is open to everyone. And what I don't want to ever see is any commissioners calling out one particular week weekend and trying to ban one weekend, that's not who Miami Beach is and it's something that uh, I will always fight against and I know our city will as well. What can be done about things like that happening, some of, some of the crime that, that's been happening on well, the Well, I'll beach. tell you, actually, that particular weekend, Memorial Day weekend, the crime was actually down. The arrests were down mm -hmm. significantly. We have an amazing police chief, Dan Oates. I mean, one of the greatest police chiefs in America. You recall in, in 2011, in that Memorial Day weekend, way before I was mayor, when we had a different police force there, it was a one situation where they shot over 100 times into a car, killing an African-American. And, and this got a horrible, huge national headlines. We brought in Dan Oates, and he has begun, and he's reformed that police department dramatically. But the question of of course, is do you want to make Ocean Drive a military state? Well, we can put in 100 officers there. I don't think the people of Miami Beach, the residents, want to pay for all that police force for 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. on Ocean Drive. Some business leaders got together this week, and uh, some of them were very vocal about what they want to happen on Miami Beach. Let's hear what some of them had to say. The strategy that we have taken in this city has been one of being reactive. That is how our policing has been, and it's a strategy. I believe that we need to take a look at that strategy and become proactive, and that would change the, the demeanor of what is happening on the street. Our officers are incredibly brave, incredibly smart, and on the job, but they need a different leadership strategy to perform when out there. And that is what would make the most difference on the street. A different leadership strategy. Your reaction to that? My reaction is it's very funny to hear it. So for the last three years, we've been working on this. The first thing we did is reduce the actual hours on the sidewalks from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, what happens is Ocean Drive is not a place we want to go anymore. Families don't want to go there. Locals don't want to go there. The people of Miami Beach in a straw ballot last year overwhelmingly said, we want to reduce the hours on Ocean Drive for liquor from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. I tried to pass it, unfortunately. You know, the way things work today, when you have owners of businesses like that mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, give great campaign contributions to certain commissioners, they don't want to do the right thing for the community. So I'm proposing that we reduce the hours from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. We actually clean up Ocean Drive, we reform Ocean Drive, and we get rid of this noise ordinance uh, exemption that we have that allows them to blare out music. Listen, Ocean Drive is a place that used to be a fantastic place. It used to be a place we all wanted to go. Unfortunately, Jackie, it's a place today where there's prostitution, there's drug dealing, and there's craziness to all hours in the morning. And it's not limited to one weekend, it's 52 weeks a year. Can you imagine, you know, you make millions of dollars of investments in the Fountain Blue and Eden Rock and the Fayan and all these great places and restaurants, and you have three or four clubs, like that particular owner, saying, I don't care about safety, I care about profits. We believe that safety is priority for our residents. And that's what I'm going to do. And by the way, if for some reason we don't get it passed, I'm going to bring it to the people in November. And once again, the people of Miami Beach will do what's right. They will say, close those bars at 2 a.m. And you protected that the other day in a meeting where it got a little heated as well. Let's take a look at what you sure. have to say. 
So that's the owner. That's the owner of one of the big clubs, who, by the way, constantly goes and convinces our commissioners that his business can serve till 5 a.m. because he does not want to reduce his income. But meanwhile, we don't have the owners of the Fountain Blue here, the Fiena here, the Eden Rock here. Every club and restaurant here who need who need to. Okay. You are talking. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there a compromise in the works? Could there be a compromise? Yeah, absolutely. I think the compromise is that all the bars and clubs in Miami Beach can stay open till 5 a.m., but this one particular section and these three or four clubs need to close down at 2 a.m. Now, if you're a hotel on Ocean Drive and you want to take people inside as opposed to outside, you can stay open till 5 a.m. So it's a very limited ordinance, and I think that it really is the right thing for us to do because how much more can we take? How much brand damage to the wonderful city of Miami Beach when you have situations happen all year round it's despicable and it's it is wrong a, a wonderful city and absolutely speaking of which a family friendly event also uh, Memorial Day weekend which was the Air and Sea show how did that go yeah, is I think this it, something that you would want to host yeah, again I think it went very very well uh, I think it was nice uh, the question of course comes out is did we overtax our police department by having this at the mm -hmm. same weekend as we had obviously the uh, the wonderful urban beach weekend so, so you would consider continuing hosting that? Event? I think we would consider it, but I think we have to really study it more. Uh, I think that's the issue. But I, the most important thing is, let's make Ocean Drive a place everybody wants to come to. 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., the economic benefit from four or five clubs to the city of Miami Beach is negligible. Okay, let's talk about another big story this week, which was President Trump taking the U.S. out of the Paris Accord. Senator Nelson had this to say, this is a huge mistake. Sea level rise caused by the earth heating up is a real threat to Florida. If the U.S. isn't going to do its part to combat climate change, then the rest of the world won't do theirs, and millions of Floridians living along the coast will be at risk. And you signed a letter. You were part of a, a group of 61 mayors representing 36 million Americans, saying that you're going to continue to honor that agreement. Absolutely. I think we've become the poster child of sea level rise brought about by climate change. Mm -hmm. I think his decision was wrong. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, but the mayors are coming together all across the country and saying we're going to respect and we're going to actually continue the Paris protocols. It's most important. Listen, the ocean rising, it's not Republican and it's not Democrat. It just knows how to rise. And it's important for us to make sure that we create resiliency, even though Washington's fighting against us. But what a shame. I mean, China's there, India's there, Europe's there, and the United States, which used to be a leader, is saying we don't want to lead. We want to retreat. It's wrong. I got to tell you something, though, Jackie. You know, uh, President Trump has that beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago, on Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. He's right near the ocean. I wonder if he's making plans in the future to turn that into a water park or something, okay? <laughs> because it's a little ridiculous. I can't imagine. Uh, let's talk about, obviously, flooding, which is a big problem uh, on the Miami Beach, but it's gotten a whole lot better yeah. after some of the implementations that have been put in place in Miami Beach. How's that going? It's going fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, areas that used to be underwater are now dry. Alton Road, West Avenue, Sunset Harbor, even Indian Creek, we're actually putting up, mm -hmm. building the roads up, putting in pumps. We're doing what's necessary, and we're doing it on our own. You know, the interesting thing is we don't get any help from Tallahassee, and we certainly don't get any help from Washington. Now, actually, Washington's saying, we're going to make the problem worse for you by allowing more, you know, carbon emissions and not being part of the, uh, the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Okay, you mentioned it, not me, but you said the word Tallahassee. <laughs> <laughs> How's the Florida trip going? Though? I'm having the best time. Okay. I I'm having a great time. I'm listening, I'm learning, uh, I'm, I'm talking at all different types of events, and, I, and I'm really hearing the, you know, I always call them the customers, listening to the people. Uh, and as I've said, uh, you know, I, I go to Democratic events, but I also go to events that are even more Republican. Uh, and some people say to me, God, your message sounds like it's almost Republican a little bit Democrat, and I said, well, it's because it's an American message. Mm -hmm. It's not right, it's not left, it's forward. And that's who I am, and that's what mayors are about. Are you still moving in the direction for the governorship? I, I definitely am moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, based on what I see happening and the fact that Florida should lead the world, but definitely because Florida itself is the number one swing state, I think we need to take and make sure Florida is going in the right direction. You talked about that you have many ideas from the Republican side and also the Democratic, but you're a Democrat. Yep. Any thinking of, of changing to becoming an independent? Absolutely. No question about it. You know what? My, my feeling is this. I have a certain product that I'm selling. That's who I am in my DNA. I'm pro-business. I'm pro-innovation. But I'm pro-education. I'm pro-people. I want to increase the minimum living wage. I want to make NASA our Silicon Valley. I want to make sure our universities, everybody can go if they can't afford it. You know, people say, well, you're so pro-business, but you also want to take care of the people. And I said, listen, if you want to
want Google, you want GE, you want Lockheed, you want all these great companies like Apple to come to Florida, go read their human resource handbook. They take care of their people. Mimic and mirror their human resource uh, uh, book and you'll get them to come to Florida. I don't know if that's Republican or Democrat. I think that's called being American. Let's talk about the casinos, because that was a big issue that they were yes. pushing uh, to bring, especially into Miami Beach. Um, and our Basel was against it as well. Mm -hmm. How do you feel on the result of how, what happened there? So far, so good. We took proactive steps in the city of Miami Beach to make sure there was no zoning permissible to allow a casino to happen in Miami Beach. Listen, casinos for me are, are a great Hail Mary pass. If you have a community that has nothing going for it, uh, you can't attract businesses, industry, throw that pass. But South Florida, Florida. Florida is a growing, exciting, thriving state, and Miami Beach is a cultural capital. Why would we want to put casinos? Certainly Art Basel, which has been the most fantastic partner of our city, said we don't think you should have casinos. And matter of fact, we would consider relocating out of Miami Beach if you had casinos. I think that's a pretty big wake-up call. I've always been against casinos. I don't want expansion. Uh, I think that the Seminoles do a very good job of managing what they have. Uh, let's focus on bringing great companies. But great companies don't want to bring their families to casino towns. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. How are the tourism numbers on Miami Beach? Fantastic. We're doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we're hoping for a great summer. And, of course, we have lots of things we got to look out for. But we're there and we're very diligent. You, you don't think that the 2 a.m. you know, cut sales for alcoholic beverages, that would affect tourism? Well, you know what's the most amazing thing? 2 a.m. on one small section of Ocean Drive. All our hotels are 5 a.m. All our big nightclubs are 5 a.m. Even the, the hotel bars on Ocean Drive are 5 a.m. We're only talking about certain big, huge clubs that are creating chaos and damaging the brand of Miami Beach. That's it. That is a distinction that many people don't know about. So it's, inter it's interesting that you make that clear. hundred percent. It's very important. Yes. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank Good you, Good luck Jackie. to you. Good luck on the baby. Thank you. I'm excited. Thanks <laughs> okay. so much. And still to come here on Impact, she has her son.